God, I miss this music. Hello, everybody. How you doing? This is me reading stuff. My name is Robin. Uh, you know me. I like drinking a lot of water. I like reminding others to drink a lot of water. That may be annoying, and I don't care. Because people do need that reminder. Uh, my friend who, well, he's now my friend. He was a listener of the podcast, and now he's my friend, Bryce. He carries around gallons of water because of me. Uh, I may be exaggerating on carries around, but he keeps gallons of water in his bedroom. And even his little uh, brother, who I think is only five, knows all about me and the water and the gallons of water that Bryce keeps around. So it works. Some of you guys have told me you drink a lot of water now because of me. But who cares about that? Uh, what, What else do I like? I like rain. I like storms. I like clouds. I don't love the sun all that much. Uh, I don't like terracotta. Don't even make me touch terracotta. I think I would be better at keeping plants around if I liked terracotta. I mean, I realize there are, um, you know, I use, I do have some hanging plants. I do have a plant from my friend Eva. Uh, I do have another plant uh, that is all, they're all in plastic. Um, And I love those, but I will not touch a terracotta plant, uh, planter. Uh, what else do I not like? I don't like the heat. I do like sweatshirts, which I'm wearing right now, and sweatpants. I'm not wearing sweatpants right now. I should be, although I'm wearing jeans that are way too big for me. Um, so that's working. It feels like close enough to sweatpants. Um, I like watching old men wa- walk across the streets. I love to draw, I love to read, I love to walk around, I hate to run. I've pretty much never run a minute of my life, ever. I can't think of a time. I got, I got out of running um, because of my heart problems when I was a kid, so even though I had to take PE, I always was one of those kids who got to walk. Um, what else? I hate being on my computer, except to talk to you guys. I hate my phone. I really, you know what I hate more than even terracotta? Public restrooms. Cannot deal with it. Can't deal with it. Uh, And I better end this rant by saying another thing I love is you guys. And I haven't gotten to say that in a while. Uh, I do love you guys, and I do love doing this podcast, and I do apologize for skipping out for the last month. It's been a kind of rough time, both rough and um, hopeful, you know, trying to take care of myself, trying to do things, trying to get through things. So here I am, I'm back, let's not get too carried away, but you know, life is life. Um, My friend Erica just texted me earlier tonight. This is all it said. It said, this is so hard. And I was like, I was typing out my response, like, I know, I didn't know what she was talking about, but I was like, preach, you know? I know it is, amen, sister, it is hard. The whole thing, everything. (laughs) And then as I'm typing back to her, trying to genuinely and earnestly respond to her, this is hard text, she's like, whoops, that was meant for someone else. I I was like, oh, well, it's a perfect text to send out to anybody actually. So anyway, um, thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you so much for all your support on my Cotton Bureau, me reading stuff, sweatshirts and t-shirts. I'll get into that later as I talk about it again, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, have no idea what I'm going to read to you guys. I'll be honest. I haven't done too much other than crochet. I haven't been in my studio until today. I haven't I don't know what I don't know how to describe what I've been up to because it's been so uh, not like me and so sort of some of it's been pathetic. I'll be honest with you. I have probably in the last three months made, and this is not an exaggeration. This is absolutely not an exaggeration. Five hundred to six hundred granny squares. For those of you that don't know what that is, granny squares are a form of crocheting. I think you can make them with knitting. I don't know. Get back to me if anyone knows, but they're more known in the crocheting world. And 
Crocheting is more like down home, Midwestern, not so cool. And knitting is a little more like stylish and cool and hipster. Um, but maybe not hipster, but anyway, crocheting is um, a little bit considered less than and a little bit uh, rattier. And, uh, you know, me, I'm from Nebraska. I'm not fancy. I, whatever. Uh, so anyway, I love crocheting, but I've gotten obsessed with it. It's been like a way to meditate. I almost use, for those of you Catholics out there, I almost use my making of the granny squares. Crocheting is a series of knots, actually. And so this will make sense to you guys who know about rosaries. In a weird way, I've used my crocheting almost like a rosary. And... I don't talk about this much, but I do a very weird version of prayer in my life all the time. I, you know, grew up Catholic. I've always loved rosaries, but I don't pray the rosary. But I do all sorts of weird versions of prayer. I would say all throughout my days. I would love to get into this with you guys one day. It's not a typical religious thing, but it is a very 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 necessary part of my daily life and a part of my uh story about how i changed uh, for the better about five and a half almost six years ago now and how i've done that and this is a part of that but so every sort of stitch i do with crocheting not every time, because I also zone out, or I'm watching a movie, or I'm watching my favorite YouTube channel, Beetle Babe. Um, <laughs> shout out Jen Abraham and the YouTube channel Beetle Babe. Um, I and I'll put a I'll put a link to her in the description of this podcast, by the way. But I usually use it as a gratitude thing, so I try to with all these stitches, all these thousands and thousands of stitches I've done, think of things that I love, you know, which is kind of kind of how I operate anyway. I mean, as you can tell, even with the accidental introduction to this podcast today, when I do that, I love, I hate, I love, I hate, I love, I love, I love, I hate. I like to categorize things that way. I just do it constantly, as you can tell. So, but the thing is, as much as I have passionate dislikes. I love more than anything. I mean, and I think about it constantly. Actually, I'm just now triggered with a memory. The first therapist I ever got when I was 18, I got to college right after I got out of, you know, high school and my parents' house and went to college. I knew I am, I think I've told this story on here. I knew immediately what I needed was a therapist of some kind. And I learned that from Oprah Winfrey. Uh, I remember telling my parents once, because I was very into Oprah as a kid, and around seventh or eighth grade, I was watching her, and she had something about therapy or counselors or something on. And I remember talking to my parents later that day, like, did you guys know there are people you can talk to about your problems? And so, honestly, my parents may have not known about that. <laughs> I don't know, mom and dad. I don't know if you listen, but let me know. Um, all I know is that I didn't get sent to one, and I wanted, I craved it, and I wanted it. And, you know, I was also a good kid, so I never really had to go see my counselor. I think just like a basic thing when you got to applying for colleges, they made you see your counselor once or something. But I didn't have a regular counselor uh, or anything like that, so... I didn't get to talk to anybody neutral about anything. And I am a talker, as you can tell, and I needed, I had a lot to talk about. A lot of things I needed to get out. So long story short, my first counselor was this kind of young, he must have been a graduate student or something. I don't know what he was, or an intern. I don't know what he was. He seemed very young, but, but very good. He told me about keeping something that calms me down in my pocket. Uh, so I, I uh, had a piece of this fuzzy stuff from, if you guys, I don't know, does anybody here know about my Uff Ball? Uh, this was this ball of fuzz that I made from second grade until my senior year in high school from this one blanket. If you want me to tell that story, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at R-O-B-Y-N underscore O-N-E-I-L. 
in the comments. Uh, let me know if I've ever talked about that on here. If not, I will. I would love to tell that story. Um, although I owe you guys all sorts of stories, but that one I love talking about. So anyway, I, I put a little piece of this fuzzball in my pocket, and it was a reminder of all the things that comfort me. And so that was starting my discovery of like focusing on the good things when you're freaking out. Because around this time, I couldn't eat in public. I couldn't go to the cafeteria. I I had all of these crazy, they're not, I'm not, no, not crazy. I had all of these nervous problems. And uh, anyway, anyway, I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. It's already 10 minutes and 41 seconds in and I need to read you guys something. So let me collect my thoughts. Let me uh, grab a book and I'll meet you right back here at me reading stuff that is 908.kpom there's frankie meowing on the dial my name's johnny fever and you like how i just interrupted myself. I loved that. I was like, I don't know what I, I, I went on and on, honestly, for about two minutes trying to uh, show you guys that I was a good DJ. And <laughs> it was awful. And normally I'm really good at it. I, I don't know what's going on with me, but you know, for 41 years, 41 and a half years, I was an awesome radio DJ who had never gotten the chance to be a radio DJ, who loved to pretend to be a re radio DJ. And then suddenly, 41 and a half years old, and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Give me, uh, give me, tomorrow I'll be back. I can tell I will be back. See, I'm about to start going on and on again, because that's what I just did, but I won't. I've got to read to you. So I'm going to be reading to you guys from a book I, uh, let's see, when did I get it? A couple of months back, it's called My Far Away One, Selected Letters of Georgia O'Keeffe and Alfred Stieglitz, Volume 1. God, is this just Volume 1? Holy shit. If that's true, that's insane because it's only 1915 to 1933. And it is the biggest book I own. It is the heaviest book I own. And the funny thing about that is I bought this to take with me. I ordered it online to take with me uh, to Santa Fe when I recently visited my parents there and went to see Georgia O'Keeffe's um, house and studio. And then, and I was like, oh, my mom, cause my mom told me, Robin, you know, be cool. Just bring one book with you. Don't bring five, don't bring six. It was this whole thing. Cause my family always makes fun of me. Cause I carry so much shit with me anyway. Like I am a heavy packer and it's mainly cause I bring tons of books. And then I bring like, what if I start drawing supplies and all this stuff? Um, and so I was like, oh, I'll just bring one book and it'll be trip appropriate. I would, I've always wanted to read these letters back and forth from Stieglitz to O'Keefe and O'Keefe to Stieglitz. And then the book came in the mail and it is the, honestly, it's humongous. So I took a photo of it. It's, it's pretty much heavier than me. And my mom was laughing. I didn't end up bringing it because even I would not take a book this heavy. But anyway, this book is Yale University Press, um, and I'm just going to, I just opened up to a page. To be honest, I haven't read much of it yet, so I opened up to a page at random, and this is the one I'm going to read. So this is George O'Keefe, uh, December 14th, 1917, from Canyon, Texas. This is when she was teaching at, I think it was called West Texas State, um, and here we go. Friday noon. Dinner, your letter. I'm at school at eight in the morning, so don't go for the mail till after dinner. One of the girls brought it to me this noon. Thought I might not want to go for it. I was surprised. Glad, too, because I didn't want to go. Everyone has gone on about their work. It's quiet here, so here I sit, feet on the stove. No class, but many things to do at school. Shall I go to school or go home? I seem to be sitting here. It sounds so funny when you remark that I'm going to paint the flag. I haven't had time yet. And what I had in mind wasn't the flag at all. It just happened to take flag shape. Oh, that's weird because I just, that's really crazy that I'm reading this right now because actually I just took, I just made um, a preliminary sketch of a drawing I want to make that is four flags. But they're flag, they're not flags either. They're flag shapes. So that's kind of odd. Anyway, 
Uh, I'm so tired. Hey, me too, Georgia. God, I'm really relating to Georgia O'Keefe right now. It's re- and hold on. I'm so tired. I'm ridiculously glad to know that tomorrow is Saturday and only four days to teach next week before Christmas holidays. Absurd to be so tired. I'm going to stay here Christmas as far as I know. It's queer. I plan to stay here. I feel too tired to go anywhere, but a sneaking notion up my sleeve seems to tell me I, I will be going somewhere in spite of myself. I don't know. Don't care. It seems so queer to think that Christmas is almost here again. Last year seems so little ago. I have some nice folks at school that I like. I seem to be waking up to some very funny things lately. Claudia used to tell me I was the most innocent person she ever saw. She said, You expect other folks to be like you are, think like you do, and feel like you do, and it isn't that way. You are different. And I've been finding such funny differences. Things almost unbelievable. They don't seem human. I would like to be in New York for a few days. Let me stop right there, actually. Sorry for all the interjections, but a letter sort of calls out for that. Um, Especially this one, apparently. But my friend Eric E. Tyler Linval, the writer and uh, just my favorite person on earth, uh, he one time, I was struggling a lot. I would say, God, this has to be like 15 years ago or something, but... I don't know, just with all sorts of things. And he finally said to me, he's like, you know what? I don't know how he said it, but he goes, Robin, here's here's something that's going to help you. You expect everyone to act like you do. And when they don't, you get disappointed. And if you eliminate that expectation, you're going to be just fine. And that was the first of very of a lot of life lessons Eric gave me. And that one was one of the most important things I learned. And... Later on, as you know, I then learned the phrase, expectations are premeditated resentments. And I love that phrase. But I, but Eric was the initial person telling me that. And so I don't know if George O'Keefe is kind of talking about that. She seems more sort of fascinated by it. I was more disappointed. You know, like my mom taught me to do thank you notes to everybody who ever does anything nice for me and to say thank you. But not everyone learns that or not everybody, and, and nor should they. That's, that's my own family's thing. But I got hurt by all sorts of things, and it's so silly now. I mean, it's so immature, actually. I mean, I admit it was very immature of me and narrow-sighted, but now I'm, now I'm, I'm not like that anymore. I don't, I don't do that. But anyway, back to this. I would like to be in New York for a few days and see you and talk to you. I want to see a real, live, talking, moving, living, thinking human being. Gertie is going to play him, so I must either go home or to school. Night again, and I'm in bed. I've been reading. Everything war, and I can't get enough of it. And still, it almost drives me crazy. Wow. Everything war, and I can't get enough of it. And still, it almost drives me crazy. (laughs) Wow. I'm not at all certain that my feeble mind has been able yet to center on anything that would make me willingly offer my life if the excitement and adventure were taken out of it all. I wish that for things so tremendous and terrible as what is happening, I might put my hand on some cause and desired result that I could feel definitely justifies it all. But I hunt all around. It's like chasing an almost invisible slippery nut. Small, slippery, hard to crack, slippery. Everything contradicts the other. Good night. I almost want to sleep here. So tired inside and out. Georgia? Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Mm. I love her. I love it. I love you. Fuck me. I don't know what to say. (laughs) Sorry, everybody with kids in the car. There are a lot of you that, for some reason, say... Have I ever told you guys this? This is a complete brag, and I am just going for it. Uh, Specifically, Becky... Who else? Uh, who was it recently? A lot of little kids like my voice, I've heard. So I'm going to start a children's podcast soon, and I'm going to try to keep the cu- cursing to a minimum. I don't curse all that much, to be honest with you on here, and uh, but when I do, I mean it. And when I do, I love it, and I'm not going to stop. All right, so listen up, everybody. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you for buying me reading stuff t-shirts and sweatshirts. As you know, now that I paid, I I only needed $40 back, and the rest of it is going to the Trevor Project. 
I don't know the exact amount we've raised so far, but it, it was a lot last I checked about three weeks ago. And for those of you that don't know what the Trevor Project is, it was founded in 1998 by um, the creators of the short film Trevor. And it is, the, it is a crisis intervention and suicide prevention hotline uh, for LGBTQ and questioning young people under 25. And they do incredible, incredible work and they deserve our money. And now more than ever, uh, we need to, we need to pour whatever, even if it's a dollar into um, helping out projects like this. But the Trevor Project is my favorite. So uh, if you decide on the Cotton Bureau's website to search me reading stuff and uh, buy a t-shirt, they are high quality, very, very, very soft t-shirts. I've started to get photos coming my way of you guys wearing them. And I wore my mine today for the first time when I went down to vote. And it made me so happy. I got a red, I think I got a medium in the women's, but I also got a gray, Heather Gray sweatshirt. And I think I got a small unisex. And I am loving it. I know it's kind of lame and embarrassing to wear your own uh, merch, I guess, but, <laughs> but fuck it. I'm doing it anyway, just because it makes me happy. And again, mainly because I love raising money for the Trevor Project. So um, go ahead and get on. I, I, I Obviously, I will put a link in the, the description here for where you can go get those t-shirts, but I would really appreciate it. It's an important cause. And thank you to everybody who went out and voted today. By the way, when I cast my ballot today, I handed over my ballot to my table. My precinct were four unbelievably gorgeous and sweet and smart and fun trans women uh, wearing shirts of various kinds explaining that. And it was like, God, I love living in this city. Los Angeles, I love you. Um, there's a lot to love. There's a lot to be stressed out about here sometimes, namely how expensive it is right now for me, but I love it and I love where I live. So God, I don't know what to say. I've been very moved today. I handed over my ballot and just started to cry. And then I walked down the street one block and, and got some, uh, a bean and cheese arepa from a uh, I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, a really great little bakery that has empanadas and arepas and all sorts of awesome stuff. I don't know why I'm pronouncing it properly when I'm not pronouncing it. I'm being like, oh my God, I hate Giada De Laurentiis and she does that and I just did it. I don't know. I'm, I apologize. I'm a mess. All right, you guys, what's up? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're eating lots of good food. Uh, I hope people have been nice to you today. Uh, well, what was your favorite moment of today? Mine was definitely walking out of my polling place. Um, what was your least favorite moment of today? My least favorite moment of the day oh, was probably learning about a very sweet friend of mine being sick and not knowing what was wrong. Um, who is your hero? My hero right now? Mm, actually, it's my brother. <laughs> oh, it makes me want to cry. It's my brother. Who is your enemy? Uh, a lot of people, uh, that I didn't vote for today. Uh, what is your favorite ocean? Mine is the Arctic Ocean. Or do you like, speaking of oceans, do you like whales or sharks better? I like whales better. Uh, answer these questions or anything else you want to answer and tell me about on Twitter or Instagram. Again, it's R-O-B-Y-N underscore O-N-E-I-L. That's all I got for now. I'm going to close out with an oldie but a goodie. We shall find peace. We shall hear angels. We shall see the sky sparkling with diamonds. That's Anton Chekhov. This, I mean, I <laughs> am Robin O'Neill, and I love you guys. Have a good week. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for your patience with me. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>